today's text, if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 23. Psalms 23. And if you will, stand out of respect for the Lord. And My, my Bible's going to read a little different. Uh, I'm reading from the NLT. But the Psalms 23, all found. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right path, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare feasts for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor, my, you honor me by anointing my head with oil, and my cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen. 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 I, I really like how the King James uh, translates that. Uh, amen. Uh, the text, Psalms 23, and I'm calling this the living Psalms 23 because uh, many a times we hear this, uh, this text uh, recited mostly at funerals, right? Mostly during a crisis when something bad is, is going on. And it's a shame that a lot of times we tend to only use this text for that purpose only. But, but the Psalms is, is a living song. It's for the living. And, and, and a lot of times it can become dangerous when, uh, when, when a biblical, biblical text becomes so familiar to us that, that, that we, begin to believe, we begin to believe that we know all there is about that text. And so we, 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 we tend to think, well, the Psalms 23, well, they only read this at films. Well, you only hear that during, 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 during a crisis. But... but but when, and when we do this, we tend to overlook the message and, and, and the applications that are obvious. Amen? Uh, there's such a great substance in, in this text uh, uh, that applies to our previous time, to our previous living, to our past, to our present, to our now experiences and what we go through. Whatever life issues, circumstances that we, that we go through now, it applies to us today. Not for when we die, but it teaches us actually how to live, how we should live. Amen? Okay? And in, and in the first line, in, in, the, um, in the first, in, in, in verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. In that, in that first verse there, the Lord is my shepherd. That phrase is so familiar, right? The Lord is my shepherd. It, it's so familiar, sometimes I, I think we miss the magnitude of those words. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen? But, but what, what was David saying? Or David was saying that, 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 that the God of this universe is your personal shepherd. He's my He's my shepherd, the God of the universe, the God that, that created everything. The God, this God is my shepherd. Biblically, we are like sheep to God. Amen. We are the sheep. He is our great shepherd. Amen. The one who guides and leads us through the pastures. Who guides and leads us along the way. Who guides and leads us on the pathway. Amen. And in this sense, he is the one, you know, in our life, if we follow him, he'll guide us. Now, is he going to guide us if we're not willing to follow him? If we're not willing to acknowledge him? If, we, if we're not going to confess that we need him? Is he just going to guide us just on GP? Huh? I don't know who God is. I don't have a relationship with him, but he... He gonna guide me. Hmm. Some somebody thinks that. 
You know, there will be many of times when some of us will drift off and we'll become lost sheep, like lost sheep in the wilderness. And this is the people of God. We will drift off, some of us. We will slip, some of us, if not all of us, right? And, you know, there, there's, been, there's been many of times where, where, the Jesus, where Jesus had to lead that, the, the, those 99 sheep to go save that one. Because he knew that was his sheep. Amen. John 10 says, if you want, you can turn there. John 10 and 11. Don't have to, but Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. Yeah, yeah. And as we look down to verse 14, it says, he says, uh, he says, I know my own sheep and they know me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He knows his sheep. Yeah. Regardless if you run off, drift off, slip, fall, yeah. Jesus knows his sheep. He already got you picked out. He already has a purpose for you. It don't matter what you do, but if you're yours, when you slip, he's there. When you slip and fall, he's there to pick you back up. Amen? Um, let, let, let me tell you about the story. Brother Anthony, one time I remember, I remember that he brought the horses here. And it was one Sunday morning and the kids was going to ride the horse. Well, he was sitting in here, they was having Bible study. And one of the horses was out there, buck wild, running crazy. He was just running around all over here, and, and none of the kids couldn't catch the horse, right? They couldn't catch the horse. And I'm thinking, well, what y'all going to do, man? Y'all going to just let him run around? Well, the boy, one day he just chasing after that horse. So I come here, hey, Anthony, yeah, man, that horse is out there running around, and man, and, and they can't catch him. He sat there, and, all right, all right, I'll give him. And I'm thinking, man, the horse is out there running around. Ain't no telling me, you know, what if he go way around the corner? So he's not going to stop. Okay, I'll get him. Okay. Well, he sat there for a few more minutes. And he went out there. And by the time, and it was just right before Sunday school was over. But, but, but when he got out there, and, and I went out there, he had the horse. The horse was, he had him calm down, tied up like he's supposed to be. My boy, the horse knew who he was. The horse knew his master. See what I'm saying? The horse knew he, at the sound of his voice, that horse listened to him. We're the sheep. He's the shepherd. And if you're the sheep, and if you're really truly God's sheep, you're going to listen to your master. Amen? You're going to listen to your master. No matter what you're going through, no matter what kind of running around you're doing, out there in the wilderness, out there in the wild, you're going to listen to your master. No matter what, you got to hope if you consider yourself a sheep. The fact that, you, yeah, we're we, we going to slip sometimes. We will fall sometimes. But when, 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 when you hear the voice of your father, God knows his sheep. He knows the sheep in it. And you won't have a choice but to listen because you recognize the voice of your father. You recognize the voice uh, uh, of your shepherd. Amen? Amen? So, and, and so Jesus goes in verse 16 in John 10. He says, he says, I have other sheep too. He says, I have other sheep. And, and they are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also, he says. They will listen to my voice and... And they will be one flock with one shepherd. Hmm. One flock with one shepherd. See, Jesus knows that, that when we have that loved one that, that, that don't seem to want to listen and take heed to correction, we can trip out over that sometimes. We can lose our mind over that loved one. 